Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Superpower User. My name is Stanley. And today we're gonna to be looking at the cheapest 10 gigabit switch that you can buy on the market that has multiple ports. So what I've got here is a switch made by QNAP. Uh, QNAP is actually known for its NASs more than anything else, but this is one of their first switches that they've came out with. They came out with a switch about middle of last year, and I've had this thing for about six months now, so I thought it's time to you know make a review of this thing. This specific model is called the QSW. Uh, one second. It's, <laughs> it's the QNAP QSW1208-8C. It's an absolute mouthful. Only God knows what letters and numbers actually mean, but what I can tell you is this thing is high performance. It's got eight RJ45 ports along with uh, 12 SFP plus ports for you know, the fiber optic connections. The configuration is a little bit strange, uh, but what you have is you've got four connections here for your SFP ports, and then you've got either four RJ45s here or four SFP plus ports. Meaning if you use port number seven, which is this RJ45 port here, it will disable this SFP plus port right here. So. Uh, what effectively you've got is four ports here, you got eight ports here, but you can only use four here. Then you got another eight ports here, but you can only use four. For me, I'm really only interested in the RJ45s. So I've got basically all eight RJ45 ports that I can use. And they are all uh, dual, duplex 10 gigabit um, ports that have, you know, Full, full bandwidth capability. This switch is rated for 240 gigabits per second so uh, of switching capability. So basically you're really not gonna get any degradation in your you know, speed, not from this. You would really be pushed to saturate multiple 10 gigabit lines, to be honest, in whatever network you have, be it um, you know, bottlenecks in the computer, bottlenecks in the writing or read write, your SSDs, whatever. So uh, the performance of this switch is more than capable. What you, the other nice thing about you know, this switch is that it is, it is very small. So I've got a MacBook Pro over here and you can see this switch is actually smaller than my Mac 15 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, there's a lot of switches on the market that you know, they're made for the industry, the rack mounts. Um, they're very, very loud. They consume a lot of power. They get really hot. 10 gigabit requires a lot of processing power, right? But, um, and, and that's kind of why 10 gigabit, and it's expensive, and 10 gigabit hasn't really trickled down to the normal consumer. But this switch right here is really opening the gates for 10 gigabit ethernet networks within the home or within your you know, small business or whatever. Regarding noise level, um, the reason, one of the main reasons why I chose this switch was because of the noise level. There are a couple other switches right around this price point, maybe five, six hundred dollars, uh, but they are known to be noisy. And the really nice ones, you know, the Netgear, uh, 10 gig of the switches, the, the ones with the more ports on them, they are, you know, they have the little teeny tiny fans and they're absolutely screaming loud. This on the other hand, it's got two fans right here that you can see. Uh, these two fans are really, really silent. They honestly, sitting, so usually what I've got is this switch sits right here and I'm about three, two to three feet away from it basically you can't hear it running at all. You don't even know if, if that it's running. Um, and 
again, that was one of the main reasons why I decided to go with the Switch was because it's absolutely silent. All right, real quick. I said, I said this thing was quiet while I was holding it up. I've now got it plugged in. I've got um, basically all the pl wires plugged in. It doesn't have any data flowing through it, so it's basically this, this is the idle condition. I've got my mic here, and I'm gonna just bring it right up to the fan for you guys to hear. I don't know if this is even picking up. Yeah, I, I don't see any levels on my camera. It's basically dead silent. Even if you get stuff transferring between your computers and loading up the, uh, the processing of the switch, I've never heard this fan you know, ramp up either. So it's, uh, it's really, really, really quiet. <laughs> what more is there to say? I'm not gonna take this thing apart. And if you wanna see the insides, there are a couple of websites. I can link you in the description down below as to you know, the, the internals and whatever. But uh, the actual internals of this thing, there are, it only uses half the space inside. So there's actually a lot of empty space inside. And in terms of airflow and cooling, it, these two little fans basically pull air from this side, brings it across the switch and exit dumps it out from the other side. And it's absolutely, it, it doesn't get hot at all. So it's really, really nice. On the back, you've got um, your power cord, your tr traditional you know, 120 volt power cord. And on the front is again, where you, you know, it's very obvious, you have all your connections. On the left-hand side, this is where you have your green and amber lights for your indicators. Uh, if I remember correctly now, green means 10 gigabit, amber means one gigabit. Um, I've been on pretty much 10 gigabit on most of my devices now, so they all light up green for me. Mm. The actual usage of transferring files back and forth between my computer and my NAS and you know those those other things, I've been able to push about 900 to 950 megabits megabytes per second. So that's about uh, quick math. I can't do math right now. So whatever whatever megabits that that is, it's not. No, it's not full 10 gigabits, but uh, that probably is because of either bottlenecks in the rest of the system or the line or whatever. But to get 950 megabytes per second, that's plenty fast. That's really quite a bit faster than most SSDs, unless you've got N NVMe SSDs or M.2 SSDs. So, you know, say the three is only good for 500 plus megabytes. Per second so it's it's plenty now PewNap does make a different another version of this it, they make a eight port version this is remember I said this was the sorry they make a four port version so um, they make a version that has the four ports here four ports four ports and then and then you lose the last eight ports here. So basically you only get four RJ45s and then you get eight SFP plus ports here. Uh, for me, I've got mainly RJ45 devices in my home. So I wanted the extra RJ45 ports. What's nice about this, uh, I forgot. Uh, what's nice about this switch is if you have other QNAP, um, NASes that have SFP plus 10 gigabit uh, ports. This is a very nice way, very quick and easy way, cheap way to get them all connected to your network. So what you can do is you can have a couple NASes that have SFP, the fiber optic connection going in and it'll spit out, it'll, it'll, it'll connect everything together. This switch will connect everything together, the um, RJ45s and the SFP plus uh, it, it, it's two different formats, but you know, the signal and the data is all the same. So uh, it's cross compatible, meaning there are a handful of cheap QNAP NASs out there that only support SFP plus for 10 gigabit. And uh, you know, RJ45 10 gigabit is relatively more expensive than SFP plus. So 
if you want to grab a couple of those, you can, you can you know, hook them up into your network, plug those in, run at 10 gigabits, and save yourself some money. Uh, it's a really nice way to set up a NAS network with this switch. So anyway, if you found that helpful, uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe in the section or down below. Um, and then if you have any questions, comment in the section down below. So we'll see you in the next one.